Hello, everyone. Rob Santos, CEO of Eru Family Office. We are really excited today to have Chris Quant on very appropriate last name, by the way. I, I, I've gotten that before. It's a good yeah. one for our industry. <laughs> very appropriate. A senior advisor success coach at Riskalyze, which is one of our most trusted software uh, providers in the RIA space and for Arut Family Office and for Wealth Management Forward. So we're really excited today. Chris is going to walk us through some of the whys and hows of how Riskalyze is such a powerful tool for advisors and now for accounting firms that are looking to get into more advisory type roles. So with that, Chris, Welcome aboard. We're really excited. Just kind of hop in and, and, yeah. and take it from here. Well, Rob, thank you so much. Thanks for allowing the chance to, to join in with you here. And, and I love how we just have this relaxed conversational feel. So really uh, excited to be here. Yeah, my, my last name, when I'm usually leading a group training or something like that, I ask whoever has the best pun on my last name will get like a Riskalyze coffee mug. So if anybody emails you a good pun on my name, let, we'll send them a coffee mug. But it's uh, it's quantifiable and we're going to help you take a quantum leap in your understanding of Riskalyze here. So there yeah. we go. All right. All right. I all love puns, it. All puns aside. So yeah, um, thanks. I'm just going to jump into and just kind of start explaining a little bit of the why of Riskalyze and, and kind of how advisors and financial professionals are using it. So if you'll allow me, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. I've got a little go for uh, it. A, a deck that I prepared earlier. So should be able to see my screen here. And uh, it's just, we call it the power of risk alignment and kind of how folks are really using Riskalyze in a lot of cases to, to grow their business, to the, retain their business, and to just basically show that they're acting in their client's best interest. So really today, we, I, I want to talk a little bit about like the, what we call the core four. So kind of keeping it really sim uh, simple and, and really where I, I say we're not launching any missiles here. We're not making any trades. We're just going to see how the power of the risk number works. Um, and the old, the old uh, adage of, you know, give somebody a fish, feed them for the day, teach them how to fish and they'll, you know, feed them for a lifetime. So part of my job here at Risk Lies is just to teach people how to fish. So we really love that we can help uh, join in with our financial professionals and really teach you how to use the software in an ongoing uh, practice. So it's, it's always a part of your subscription here is that you're going to get coaching. And that's one of the things that I do is I get to help uh, teach folks how to use it and best practices. So just want to talk a little bit about the why of the risk number, a little bit about capturing that risk number, creating a portfolio. And we'll touch a little bit on retirement map, just helping folks understand for the long term, like, hey, are we invested uh, for the long term? Is our plan really working and, and making sure that we're on track here? So a little bit, a little bit of risk allies by the numbers, you can can read all of that right there. But really, at the end of our day, really, when it comes to winning new business and, and, and onboarding new clients, retaining those clients, and again, showing that best interest, that's really where risk allies wants to help the uh, financial practice and the advisors shine. We always say, you know, we're so glad to be a small part of your firm success because you have a lot of stuff going on. And the little piece that we can add in that to, again, help empower your clients. We say our mission is to empower the world to invest fearlessly. So that's what we want to do. And really, Riskalyze is based on a Nobel Prize winning framework called Prospect Theory, where folks are two and a half times more uh, going to react to risk more than they are to reward. It's just kind of how we're built as humans when we see something bad news that really gets our attention more than like good news is great, uh, but uh, bad news, boy, we our ears really perk up. So that's based on prospect theories is kind of the idea behind Riskalyze. And let's talk a little bit about the risk number because it kind of all we say it all starts with the risk number and it's a quantitative way to pinpoint how much risk an investor wants, how much risk they currently have and how much risk they need in order to meet those long-term goals. Now let's talk about the risk number range. Let's zoom in a little bit. Now that range is from one to 99. So if I'm a risk number one on the scale, we can say, you know, I've got everything is in cash. So there's really no risk associated with it. And, and that's good because cash isn't going anywhere, but also the cash isn't going anywhere. Our money isn't really working for us. So all the way to the other side of the spectrum is a risk 99. So we could think of something highly volatile. You could think of uh, crypto, Bitcoin, you know, tech stock, something that goes up and down, something that has a lot of volatility is associated with it and everywhere in between the middle. And we believe that everybody has a risk number, right? Just because you're older 
doesn't necessarily mean that you're what we would maybe call conservative and just because you're younger doesn't mean you're aggressive now those are those are subjective terms in our industry and what we're aiming to do is take that subjectivity of conservative because rob as as you know conservative probably means something different to you than it does to me than it does to the next person that walks into the room so how do we how do we put a number to that and uh our our founder our ceo aaron i, I like the example that he uses where he says you know uh you don't have a contractor build a conservative hallway to an aggressive dining room <laughs> they, 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 you feet and inches, right? We put, we make it quantitative. We put numbers to it, and that's what we're attempting to do with the risk numbers. Everybody has their own individual risk number, their own fingerprint, which then helps us have the discussion around risk and really get them invested the way that they understand and that they should be. So, uh, with that, uh, here's just kind of a quick look at uh, a client's profile, and again, kind of those core four things: finding out their risk tolerance. So, the, using a risk questionnaire, how much risk do they want? that the client is telling me what they're comfortable with. You see, it kind of looks a little bit like a speed limit sign. Like how fast are you comfortable going? And then how much risk do they currently have? Let's just take their current investments and let's put it into Riskalyze and Riskalyze is gonna give that uh, risk number. So does that match up with what you're telling me is what you want and what you're comfortable with? Or do we have a bit of a gap here? And in this case, we can see that we have a bit of a gap. Now, now there's a recommendation about the should have if we created a proposal for them, we can do that. And then using your your risk, uh, your risk, what's it, what is it? Risk capacity there i had to look at my slide there real quick but your risk capacity how much can you handle in the long term and can we stay invested for the long term does this plan that we're on make sense really at a high level view using riskalyze retirement map so today really going to focus on a lot on how much they want capturing their personal risk number with that risk questionnaire that we have uh, how easy it is to enter in their current holdings, just see how much they currently have in their portfolio. And then looking at that retirement map, again, just have that high level view of, of the risk that they need in order to meet their long-term goals. But hey, Rob, if it's okay, I'll, I'll jump into Riskalyze and kind of just do a quick demo, but anything to add there or, or, or kind of as we're going along? That, that was that was awesome. We're excited, excited to get into it. I will just say that you know we get a lot of questions from the accounting firms that we work with about well why is you know why is a risk score uh the the first one of the first things that we should look at when we're starting to talk to clients uh about it and the answer that we always get back is you know when you're talking to your clients about starting to offer some of these advisory services it is absolutely the first step of just through this slide right here where are you today how much mm -hmm. risk are you taking today how much risk do you want to take and what is the the outcome of it yeah. and so it, you know what we really love and our accounting partners really love is that it's answering questions that clients are asking mm -hmm. in a way that they can be able to understand so that's just my my little like you know promo there of why it's been so fantastic so we'd love to see you know keep going and, and show yeah. us what works love it yeah and and great point i mean that that's so good that that's awesome to to kind of sh show the value there so uh i'm gonna go ahead and get into riskalyze right here and you'll see that we've got this is this is our home screen so again like i said it, rob we're not launching any missiles or anything like that oftentimes i say like hey if you're using riskalyze just start with using yourself or a family member or a friend like you just kind of get dip your toe in the water a little bit don't let it be the first time when you're using it with a client or anything like that just so you get used to navigating and we've got some great help resources here so if you ever need to find out more you live chat with our team or schedule a call with a coach like we're happy to to definitely guide you through it uh, and everybody who signs up with riskalyze your first 90 days you you have a coach that's dedicated to you to help you get onboarded and make sure that you've got everything lined up so we really want to make sure sure that we're taking care of folks and we're not just sending them in blind on like I, I don't know how to do this well good luck go ahead and take it so that's uh we want to definitely get you coached along here but just kind of showing the example that we talked about i'm going to go ahead and add uh, a new client into riskalyze now you'll see that we can do it manually or, or we do have integrations available but i'm just going to do it manually right here and we're just going to have sally smell it sally smith is going to be our client type in her name and we're going to add client right there and we're going to get to this profile screen that we saw a little bit that that has wants that needs and that should have and and this is we have a, a blank canvas to work from so i want to talk about one capturing that client's risk number so sally smith right here i want to find out how much risk she's comfortable with she's telling me i'm just not going to assume that she's aggressive or conservative again those subjective terms like i want to put a number to what she says that she's comfortable with so we're going to go ahead and click on that little question mark that box with a question mark that takes us to our risk number tab and right here we're going to use this option called use a questionnaire 
Now this, this opening screen here, you can fill this out ahead of time or some of these questions are gonna be in the, in the question for Sally. So if I know her investment amount, I can go ahead and put that in. Maybe, maybe she's got $100,000, maybe $500,000. And I know that I can go ahead and fill that in ahead of time. And that will populate the question in the questionnaire. But I'll tell you this, a lot of folks like to leave that blank just because I want the client to answer, I want them to tell me how much they have to invest because maybe, maybe I know how much should be under management, but maybe there's some held away assets there that we don't know about, and maybe they'll they'll mention that in this in this part. And I'll say this too that the dollar amounts are very important here because for Sally, I want this to be a very realistic number for him for her. And I use this it's an extreme example, but you know, Rob, if if Warren Buffett took this questionnaire and the the dollar amount was ten thousand dollars, well, obviously he's gonna probably be I don't know, maybe not. I might be making an assumption, but he, he might be pretty fast and loose with, with 10 grand as opposed to his total. You never know. You never know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he didn't get to where he was without being, I'm sure, a pretty smart guy. But uh, who knows? Ten, I don't know what his, you know, his, his play money would be, would be 10 grand. But you kind of get the idea. Uh, but for a family, you know, where 100,000 might not mean a lot to somebody, for a family, investing 100,000 is, is a really significant amount. So we want to make sure that those real dollar amounts are in there. So I'm going to leave that blank for right now. And I'm just going to, there's a, a, an option here, launch the questionnaire now where we can walk through it together. And oftentimes I have advisors, the first time that they're walking this through with a client or a prospect, they're going to walk through it with them just to make sure that they understand and are setting good expectations. Um, and then a year from now, maybe I want them to do that again. I can email it to them and they can go ahead and fill it out ahead of time. Time ahead of our meeting and we can just make sure that if there's any changes to document that so we've just got our our landing page here i'm going to click on get started it says welcome sally it'll it'll have the firm logo there for your firm logo so it makes it a little bit more uh labeled for for you and these initial questions aren't going to get their risk number these are just some fact finding information so again just some some kind of reconnaissance for you as the financial professional as the advisor just to say hey what are some goals so we know sally she can pick up to three we'll just say retirement and income or a couple if there's one that's not here we can add a custom goal I'll go ahead and click on next. Anything, and, and we'll, we'll talk you through it here, but let's talk about your financial status. Anything in terms of employment, inheritance, major expenses, et cetera. So if Sally has something coming up that she just wants to make a note of, um, she can do that. Maybe she wants to buy a boat. Sure, no, we, we can talk about that. That might be something that uh, we can see if that's how that's gonna go. Um, now here's that investment amount. So if we had filled this in at the beginning as that optional field, that would populate here automatically. But I just wanna see what Sally's gonna put in. And she's she's telling me she's got about 500,000. I'm like, okay, that's good. Let's, let's go ahead and take that and I'll click on next right there. Birth date, this isn't uh, 100% necessary, but we can absolutely do this. Uh, and this will feed into our retirement maps feature uh, a little bit later and the retirement age. Again, not necessary to fill this out, but it's just kind of an additional bit of information that we have here. And I'm gonna go ahead and click next. Now, again, still not getting a risk number yet. Again, just doing a little bit of fact finding, doing a temperature check. So Sally, how do you feel about the market? How are you feeling? It's, it's been a little bit crazy lately. Are you feeling up, you know, feeling down? How are we feeling? She's like, you know, overall, I keep an eye on it. You know, I'm not super into the weeds, but I see that it goes up more than it goes down. So let's just say that that's okay. Well, how are you feeling about your financial future, Sally? Are you feeling confident? Are you feeling a little anxious? Ah, well, you know, probably one of the reasons I'm sitting here talking to you is I've got some questions. I'm not quite sure. So I'm going to put anxious and we can make a note of that of like, OK, I'm going to bring that up as a conversation topic a little bit later. So now here's where we start to get her risk number. What is her risk tolerance? What is her preference? So based on that five hundred thousand dollars, we've got this little slider bar here and we're just going to think in the term of the next six months. Now, a year from now, we've done, we did a bunch of studies that, you know, a year from now, you know, we can kind of think or a year back from now, we can kind of remember that. But the six month is a really good time frame. I've got a really strong connection to what was happening six months ago. Rob, I think a year because my Facebook memories come up and, uh, you know, I I can say a year ago right now we were in Orlando uh, at Disney World, but I would have told you I had Facebook not told me that I would have had no 
recollection that I was in Disney World. I knew it was in February. I just didn't know when it was. But anyway, so but I've got a pretty strong connection to about six months ago. So I'm just going to say, OK, I'm just going to grab this little blue dot here and just you can see on the left hand side that dollar amount is changing and that's based on that five hundred thousand dollars. So I can I call it like the little yodeler guy from The Price is Right when he's climbing up the mountain. Where do we go before we, we tip off the mountain here? What's going to feel comfortable for you? So Zai, I want you to tell me basically kind of where the music stops for the chance of gaining, let's say $73,000. I'm there's two sides to this coin, right? I'm comfortable risking about $46,000. Okay. Now those, again, those dollar amount uh, are important. So I want you to see how it's hitting the old pocketbook there because I don't want there a dollar amount to flash in front of your eyes. And all of a sudden you're, you're going to panic and say, no, get me out. Like Chris, I can't take it. Get me out of the market. And then we rinse, lather, repeat that a couple of times until we sabotage our long-term goals by getting out of the market, missing that recovery, buying back in when it's high again, right? It's, it's our, our kind of worst case scenario for an investor. So she's going to say, hey, Chris, the music stops about there for me. I, over six months on $500,000, I could stand, the gain's great, but also I could stomach about $46,000 in loss. Okay, Sally, I want you to pay attention to those numbers real quick, because what I want, I'm going to click next here, and we're going to put that immediately to the test. So you said that that range was okay. So let's say the market dropped quickly. Let's say tomorrow it dropped quickly and your portfolio uh, dropped to 42,000. Is that still gonna be okay? Even with a quick drop like that, are you still okay with that? Sally thinks about it. She's like, yeah, you know, I said 46, 42, I'm still okay with that. I, I see what you did there. You, you tried to test me, but that's okay. Um, if she said sell and reduce risk, she's like, I can't handle that. Then it would take us back a previous screen to that slider and we'd want to maybe dial that in a little bit more for her there but she says she's okay to stay invested so i'm going to choose a on the left here i'm going to go ahead and click next and now the the rest of the questions are going to, i call this the optometrist test so if you've ever been to the eye doctor what looks better a or b a or b sally i want you to tell me what looks better for you a or b so we could keep our our kind of range that we had there. I'm okay landing somewhere between either the up or down and I'm okay with that. Or if they dangled the carrot out in front of me and I just $11,000, I could just be guaranteed of that tomorrow. Would that be okay? Sally's so like, you know what? I'm, I'm good. I'm going to go ahead and stick with a there. I'm going to click on next and you'll see at the bottom here, we have a little progress bar. That's kind of letting us know how far we're going through the questions here. So, okay. Let's uh, let's take another swing at that, Sally. So we've got A here, pretty much still the same, but like we kind of dangled the carrot a little bit more. What if you could have just a certain gain of $22,000? Would you stay within that range or just take that certain gain? And we're trying to figure out what her preference is. Is her preference going to be more towards that range where there could be more risk and reward through there, or would she just take this certain gain? So she's going to say, you know what? Good, going to do that. Okay, whoa, 27 grand. That, that'd be a pretty good payday. So Sally's like, okay, I, I think B. And now I'd have 527, I, I'd be okay with that. Now we'll see, oh, well, we lowered it a little bit there. Um, okay, yeah, I think 25 would still be good. Um, okay, now we kind of up, we kind of upped it on, we lowered it, but we kind of upped it to see like, what's your final push? Would you still be willing to take even more risk? And kind of like, ah, at this point, seeing where the questions are going, I'd take that risk or certain gain. And she's like, I'm, I'm going to pump the brakes a little bit. I just, I would just, I'd be okay with a certain gain. I feel like I'm going to be, if it goes too much, too much fluctuation, I'm not going to be able to handle it. So then we're going to go, okay, here's our risk number. It's a risk number 53. So going through that now, remember, we took a little bit of risk at the beginning. We in the first couple of ones, we said, yeah, we're OK with the range. We said, OK, for the chance of gaining about 82 grand, we're comfortable risking about 52. Now, that's larger than what she said that 46 was. So she's like, you know, I, I realize that I kind of chose those A's at the beginning. Um, I, I want to make an adjustment. Can we make an adjustment? Sally, I'm glad you asked. Yes, we can. So right here where I either I say, yes, that feels like me or no, I want to make an adjustment. I can adjust this risk number up or down by about five numbers. So I can get it there or I could go up if she's like, no, I let's let's put the gas on. Let's go a little bit more. But she's like, you know, I'm I'm OK. A 48, I'd be OK right there. Let's let's keep it there. Kind of my original thing. OK, OK, well, that that sounds good. Now, if she wanted to go back and say, hey, that was a good thing. I think I understand it better. I want to retake this assessment. Then it would take us back to that slider bar. But we've, we've got it dialed in for her. Yes, that feels better. We're all done right now. So that opened up a new tab and I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, here's Sally. We went through that. 
here's we've got some uh, a wrist number for here that's waiting for us to to review um, anytime that I want to I can review that and it says oh it says incomplete well I I, I finished that let's see what uh, let's click refresh here let's just force it to uh, to update here and do know that when you have a completed risk questionnaire you'll get an email in your inbox so that you will see if if you had emailed it out ahead of time for instance there we go um, and it went to a 50, eh, I didn't remember my results. Cool. Always nice, Rob, when it wants to uh, not remember your results when you're when you're doing a demo. So let's just say, hey, Sally, this actually, this kind of proves my point. Like, even if we did that and we said that wasn't right, I can click on a just risk number there. And I can say, actually, Sally, we talked about this and we're gonna confirm your risk number at a, at a 48. We're gonna be okay to say, hey, you're a 48. Here's the results from our questionnaire. I'm gonna confirm that risk number and we've got Sally's risk now. Anytime I wanna review those results, I can. So you can see like, here's her goals. Here's how she answered those questions about being anxious a little bit. Um, I can res uh, go through those initial comfort zones and how she answered that those, those questions, those AB questions. She wants to buy a boat. That might be a talking point if I'm onboarding Sally, like, hey, I'm gonna make a note that we're gonna talk about this maybe in meeting two or meeting three when we talk about our long-term goals. But again, I want you to look over here and say hey, that six month comfort zone and we can kind of get a good idea of where we're starting. Now, and this is a great starting point. Does this mean that we're gonna come in and recommend exactly a 52 for Sally? Not necessarily, but this is a start a point where we can get to start to get her risk tolerance, her risk preference and start a conversation around there. So we'll see that I've got her risk number now. Now I'm gonna go back to this overview screen. Again, not launching any missiles, pretty simple exercise. Practice it on yourself, practice it on a family member as you're going through. Um, we've got some great resources where we have a video kind of walking through each step and the talking points that go with it. So a lot of good resources there. But I go back to my, I call this my drone shot, kind of looking from the top down. Like we've got part of the story here. She's a risk number 48. But what in the world does that mean? You know, like, okay, I'm a 48, but what do I put that in context with? Well, that's where the next step comes in of saying, okay, Sally, how are you currently invested? Let's take your, your statement and let's take just your holdings. Let's put those into risk allies and see what kind of number that we get. So I'm going to go ahead and create her current portfolio. We're going to put in, just enter in manually a few holdings. While I'm pulling this up, Rob, anything to, to add to that as we're going through the process here? You know, I love it. I, I would say a couple of workflows that our accounting firm partners really love is you know a lot of accounting firms get asked the question in terms of investments is this am i doing some is some is the person who's managing this doing right by me or not mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right all the time accounts are asked that question and a lot of times they've shied away from that answer because they want to try to keep the barriers and so what we found a lot of those partners to be very very useful when that question gets brought up Am I doing this correctly? Or is this person doing this correctly by me? You know me, you've yeah. done my account, my taxes for 20, 30 years. The risk questionnaire is one is just a beautiful thing to say, look, just answer this by your gut. There's no right or wrong answer. Just click, yeah. click it and get through it. And then second, what you're about to show us, which is loading up the actual positions of that statement and then showing that big difference. Those two activities, maybe not both at the same time, but one or the other yeah. helps arm those accountants with saying, look, this is not just me CPA giving you my, my opinion, but this is, you know, this is also the math and the heart. And we always talk about the competition between the brain and the heart, math and the heart, you know, and, and whatnot. And it's just a really wonderful tool for either one of those questions. And we, a lot of our CPA partners get asked that question all the time. So I'll let you, I'll let you keep going. That's good. No, I appreciate that additional color. There. That, that's really good. And kind of seeing the, the power and the conversation that it starts right there, where we can say, Hey, we're, 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 we're doing right by you. We want to make sure that we're understanding where you're at. So, so let's, let's talk a little bit about like just saying, Hey, let's do the other half of that story and just kind of bring a more complete picture here by putting in those investments that Sally has. So I, I started to build out a new portfolio for here. I'm just going to use fun stocks and other right here. 
and I'm going to enter these in manually. So uh, again, not launching any you know rockets into space or anything like that. Nothing. I'm I'm not hitting anything that's going to self destruct here. We're going to go ahead and just simply uh, enter those in. Now I'm going to start by putting in her portfolio total here, which is five hundred thousand, and that's going to be the start here. And we'll see that right now. It just puts it all in cash right now. But we're going to go ahead and put in our holdings and, and pull that from cash here. So the first one that I'm going to put in is F A N A X, and you'll see that it starts to search the database there. Okay, uh, we're going to put that in there. Now I could, if I was just doing this and I had the dollar amount, I could just enter the, the name or I could search by ticker symbol or I could search by the entire name. Uh, if you have either one, that'll search the database. Um, and then the dollar amount, since I put it all in cash to start here, I'm just going to go ahead and do a percentage here. So she's got 40% in that. So I'll hit enter and you'll see that's going to start to pull that now from, from cash here. I'll put in my second holding here, which is F-L-O-T. And again, you can either search by the ticker or by the full name of uh, the holding there. And we're going to say that we've got, how much do we have in there? We've got 25% in there. And then the next one is A-B-A-L-X. You're kind of getting the idea here. Rinse, lather, repeat, uh, searching the database there. And we think we've got, what, 20% in that. And then SPY, we'll just kind of keep it simple today. We'll do SPY, you'll see all the different results that are coming back here. But SPY, and we're gonna have 15% in there. And now kind of quickly, I see that I've got her portfolio right now is a risk number 78. So again, helping to tell that story, we can see the, the total investment amount right here. I can see my upside and my downside. So again, that's it's 17%, 87,000, way, way more outside the governor of what she said that she was willing to, to, to tolerate. So we can kind of quickly and easily show, and this is, and for those wondering, this is basically a, a visual way of showing standard deviation uh, on the portfolio here based on that investment amount here. So that upside and that downside, that risk tolerance. So if I go back here and uh, show that her, the story here, a 48 and she's a 78, well, I can see obviously that we've got a gap here. And Rob, kind of to your point, we had uh, one of my teammates a few months ago was talking uh, to an advisor that basically said this, she had recently lost her husband. She was a widow, uh, had been with their financial institution for about 40 years. He managed the money. She had a check in her gut, like it was okay. But now that the it was on her, the onus was on her now, she wanted to get a second opinion. She came in and, and took through the risk questionnaire and then he entered in her holdings and her just seeing the, the gap between her risk tolerance, what she said that she was comfortable with and how they were invested, just seeing those two numbers right there was enough to convince her, like, I I need to I need to make a switch. And it, it was a seven figure thing, but it was it was enough that to tell the story there. He didn't have to do much convincing beyond that. So again, winning those new clients and kind of helping people understand where they're at and and does that make sense or or do we need to talk about you know, or, or whoever we need to go to to talk more about that. Yeah, I, I, I just want to underline this fact. You know, we had we uh, we were talking with a, a CPA. He said, "Look, you know, I don't list my services necessarily on my website anymore. About I do taxes, I do all this other stuff. I put peace of mind. I put clarity, and those are the services that we're trying to yeah. do here. And That's this right sure. here, the ability to do a risk questionnaire." to ask your client about the appropriate risk profile that they want. And two, giving them clarity on the actual risk profile of the things that they're in answers that question for advisors, but for a lot of CPAs that get that question that say, I've been working with Bob or I lost my husband or my wife that did all the investments. I'm kind of a little lost. I just want to know, is this kind of appropriate or not for what mm. I'm looking for? That clarity to power those accountants to have, you know, confidence in the fact that they're giving clarity to their clients about what are the possibilities that this portfolio are going to do and make them have some peace of mind. I will also underline, because we've got a lot of accountants that are very intelligent, very yeah. into math, which is not a huge surprise. Right. All of this science that Riskalyze powers us in is driven by modern portfolio theory, the top ends of what modern portfolio theory are done. And I'm sure everybody that has gone that academic route to try to back into what those projections that investment advisors usually do um, have all seen how confusing that is to clients. Mo you know, Monte Carlo simulations, 
30 year, uh, pro, you know, projections based off of stuff, you know, that they don't understand. And so I just want to underline here for a second that this provides that clarity in an understandable way to their clients for those questions again that they're they're asking. So I just want to underline that the accounts themselves, although in our program, we're hoping they become the next advisors of the next generation, sure. they don't have to be, um, you know, but it is a really useful tool for them, again, to come back to, to providing that clarity and understanding to the questions their clients are asking. So I just want to, you know, we have a lot of CPAs that just use these two functions and are super happy about it. And it's led to all kinds, it's led to all kinds of opportunities, not just on the investment advisor side, but also just deeper trust with the accounting firm relationship because they're providing that clarity and understanding. So keep going, you're doing great. Well, and, and I gotta say just from my own personal experience to to our, our CPA that my wife and I go to every year, I mean, we're getting about time where it's gonna be for our, our yearly visit and and talking about that and and working for Riskalyze, I, I kind of think about because there is always conversations about the long term and are you guys thinking about this and do you guys know where and, and that whole planning that conversation kind of just naturally comes up and i i always think like boy i wish you could just take me through like you know this this exercise right now because i know and and i know that he's having these conversations with other folks and so to 100 percent to your point rob like it, it just it comes up in that conversation and i think it's very very valuable kind of even thinking from my own experience and this is this is kind of like the last thing i'll say and i you know when it comes to creating the proposal rob do you want to kind of speak a little bit to how arrowroot can, can kind of help in that if that's something that they choose to, to, yeah. to kind of engage in as well absolutely so you know most of the accounting firms that we're working with are are working with an advisory firm to do the proposal side, right? They say, I don't want to choose the stocks. I don't want to choose the ETFs. I don't want to do, I don't want to, I don't want to do all of that stuff, but I want to have certainty and confidence in what is being done for my clients, especially if they're going to be put partnering into that role. So it could be error route. A lot of times, maybe it not it isn't an error route, but it's another RIA or an advisor that after they've gone through our program, they understand the value of this. And so we'll try to make sure they're partnering with the firm that is using this software. And so, like I said, a lot of the accounting firms are using these first two steps you just talked about, but they've been partnered together with an RIA that's building those portfolios to match those risk scores. And now they've got, now the accountant has confidence that it's being managed within risk tolerance. The client has confidence that it's being managed. And it's all on one system so that everybody that's allowed to be part of that has clarity into what is going on, right? Yeah. So, you know, for those CPAs that we work with, a lot of them have ambitions of turning into their own RIA down the road. And we applaud it because we think they're like going to be the best advisors for this industry. It's just going to be great for this industry. But we have a lot that say, I want to be involved in this as part of my new advisory model. And so, you know, they'll do this, some of this front end for prospects, for current clients, as they're starting to, to transition them into more advisory. And then they partner with either Airroot or another RIA to create those proposals. And by the way, I don't want to steal your thunder, but Riskalyze has a, a lot of model portfolios that would automatically match your risk number in an appropriate kind of fiduciary way to do it. Um, a lot of other advisors will add their own thoughts. So maybe more diversification than what the model is doing. Maybe the client has some individual stock holdings that they never want to sell. They love Apple. They never want to get rid of it. So you want to build a portfolio around it. But I really want to underline that the CPA, by utilizing something like Riskalyze, doesn't have to become an investment advisor day one. You're providing that clarity. You're providing a lot of confidence. And then you can partner with somebody like Arrowroot or somewhere else to actually deliver some proposals and results as you start to learn that or not. And you have that confidence and clarity to continue to provide these services to a wider array of clients and a better depth of service to your existing clients. Yeah, so good, so good. Yeah, yeah. And it just made me think too of like, 
you, you know, for so often we, we hear, well, well, why do I want to start the conversation with risk? That's crazy. Like, why do I want to get them to start thinking about, but like really creating this framework where, where people can understand and, and, and embrace risk appropriately and understand those boundaries, exactly what you're saying, Rob. And then we can, we can react to it appropriately and we can build things around them that then help them stay within those, those guidelines and not have those, again, those emotional reactions uh, when, when things do get a little wonky uh, and, and make sure that we're building that trust and helping them stay invested for the long term. So yeah, I appreciate that uh, additional color there. That's, that's great. So I'm just going to show us one more thing, right? Can I just show us, do we have time just yeah, to do retirement real quick? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Yeah. So I, I just want to say like, Hey, just looking at the, this is, this is a high, we're not doing detailed financial planning here. This is just kind of, I say it's from a 30,000 foot view and, and Rob, I always say like, Lord have mercy. If somebody didn't show this to me when I was in my twenties, just to kind of think long-term, like it's, it's kind of just a real simple win, or this could be somebody pre-retiree or they're already retired looking at the long-term in the context of that risk number. So we can say, Hey, you know, right now we're modeling your current portfolio and we've got uh, a great chance of success here of our money lasting us long term. Well, the thing is, though, here's we got to we got to say, you know, what's going on here? Um, you know, she's going to retire in 2045 and she's saving about four hundred dollars a month. So that's going to help. That's going to help our cause there a little bit. Um, and then in retirement. I was just gonna say, well, well, what do you, what do we need? We, we're probably making a pull about six thousand dollars. Let's just, let's just start there, and use that. Oh, okay. Well, now that we're starting to put some numbers in and, and playing with that a little bit, maybe this can kind of help drive our point that you know a risk number seventy eight. It's, it's outside of your risk tolerance, but also it's probably not going to be the most efficient way to invest. Uh, going forward. And actually what we could do and, and kind of Roger, what you're saying is like, let's work with somebody that can get a, a portfolio that's built out to this more, more efficient, more in the range of what your risk number is, and is going to give us a better outlook of, of long-term success. Now we could say like, well, if we want to stay in the green, you know, Riskalyze will give us some, some ideas here of saying, well, we can only take out 3,600. Was well, that going to be a great idea? That's probably not realistic, right? Like, or we could, we could delay our goal and we could keep working for a few more years probably not the most ideal, or you could say $2,400 a month. I'm guessing tacking on another two grand a month uh, in savings might not be the best thing. And that's why we want to say, let's, let's see if we can build out a more efficient portfolio for you. So we can come in here. Um, I could change if I had a proposal, I could switch over to that. Also, we could just say, Hey, let's just use a, a custom risk target, or it's basically kind of a, just a generic number. I'm just saying, where would that be? Now, this to me is going to be okay just to kind of start having those conversations. Now, this isn't going to take in all the efficiency of if we build out an actual portfolio, like the expense ratios and the dividends and, and the potential annual return and all that, that can really dial this in on our probability of success. But just using just kind of just, just a generic risk number can also just help us have the conversation in that to help them see what might be a good starting point. So again, a way with pre-retirees or retirees, again, you can kind of see how simple it is taking these these complex things that are, are happening in the background and really what our goal is to make it visual um, so that people can kind of quickly and easily understand that ask the questions that they might need to have you can you can provide clarity in there um, there's other layers to this that we won't go in like a stress test to see different market environments but we'll we'll hold off on that for now with all the kind of the shiny objects Rob but that's just a little bit of, I just wanted to show inside of Riskalyze really kind of helping tell the story around those things of again how much their risk tolerance is how much they want how much they're comfortable with it that risk questionnaire, how much they currently have, and then really what do we need in order to meet those long-term goals? So um, that that's that's what I got. And, and I, I sure appreciate you giving me the opportunity to come in here and, and talk a little bit about it. I absolutely love it. And I, you know, I just want to say thank you, Chris, because uh, you guys have been wonderful partners, not just at Root, but all of the CPA firms um, that we've been working with. And, you know, our mantra uh, is always don't fight the robots, partner with them. And so, um, you know, <laughs> you know, you guys really, you know, for the CPAs that are thinking of starting to go into advisory, we always tell them like, they're, you know, don't try to boil the whole ocean. Don't try mm. to, you know, do it all at once. Just get started. And I will tell you that from personal experience and from experience working with CPA firms, Riskalyze is one of the first software pieces of the puzzle that we introduced to them because it's, mm -hmm. it is, it is an intuitive process and it is so helpful. You know, there's all kinds of other things we could talk about. You know, you can put a risk, uh, get your own risk score 
little button on your website and you start to offer these things and people can come in, play around with it, try to get their own risk score. There's wonderful presentations that get pre-populated and put together. Data starts to flow from the custodians directly so you don't have to do manual things. So there's a whole lot of other value propositions that Riskalyze likes, uh, can be able to provide. But a lot of CPAs get uh, daunted. They're busy, they're mm -hmm. inundated by a ton of stuff. Yeah. Software is coming at them from every which way. And we did. So Riskalyze has always been one of the first things that we introduce, especially with accounting firms that are looking to adopt this advisory model. Because again, they're starting to answer some of those absolute direct questions that everyday people have in a way that they understand and they don't feel talked down to, right? You know, yeah. uh, and and we think that is just the way to go. So we're we're on board. But really appreciate your time today, Chris. Looking forward to having you back on uh, yeah. you know, on on the podcast. We've had had you on before. We're looking forward to having you on again, maybe on another panel. And we will list all of uh, Riskalyze's uh, information on there as well as your contact information for anybody that wants to get in touch and learn a little bit more. Um, we'll be sure to list that uh, after. Love it. Love it. Rob, again, I appreciate the time. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Chris.